Well, some of you may remember, I think it was my first Sunday or my second Sunday here, I told you one of my favorite stories, often called the Rabbi's Gift, or the Rabbi's in the Woods. Briefly, that story is that there's a monastery that's fallen on difficult times. Numbers of monks are dwindling, the age of the monks is increasing. They're worried, will they be able to, sit, to sustain themselves? But they go about their work and their ministry and their prayer and their sharing meals and their sharing work in the garden. And outside the perimeter of this monastery, there is a, a hut, a prayer hut. And whenever the uh, rabbi, the local rabbi, goes to that hut to pray, the monks start buzzing amongst themselves and say, the rabbi is in the woods, the rabbi is in the woods. So one night around the meal, they're sharing and talking and lamenting and worried, and one of them says, hey, Abbot, why don't you go and talk to the rabbi? Just see if he has any words for us that might, might help us out in any way. And the abbot agrees and goes and talks to the, to the rabbi, and they sit and they share tea and they share stories. They share their hopes for the world and their community, and then the abbot finally asks the question, Dear Rabbi, our, our monastery is falling on hard times. Our numbers are dwindling. We're, dwindling. We're, we're worried. Do you have any word for us? And the rabbi pauses and thinks and says, Well, I'm not sure if I have any particular advice for you, but I do know this. The Messiah is among you. The abbot pauses with those words and then goes back to the monastery and the brothers are very anxious to hear the word. And, what did he say? What did he say? Well, we talked about our lives together and our frustration. What did he say, Abbot? Well, he, he said that the Messiah is amongst us. So as the story goes, what happens with the monks is that they start treating one another differently, thinking that one of them is actually the Messiah. And then in that circle and circle of kindness and kindness going around, treating one another as if they were the Messiah, a new life and a new spirit comes to the monastery and new vigor in their praying and singing and sharing. And one day, lo and behold, new young man walks through the doors and says, I would like to be a part of your community. I remember that story this week because I had the feeling of saying something like, the Pope is in Congress. <laughs> <laughs> the Pope is at the United Nations. The Pope is at a homeless shelter. The Pope is in this great motorcade when a young girl comes running up to him and he lifts her in his arms. And something is beginning to happen. When we see quite simply and magnificently somebody walking the talk of the gospel and just stating it clearly with incredible kindness and respect and power and truth, saying things that we have heard ourselves and have said ourselves. It all begins with caring for the poor. It all begins with, begins with caring for one another and for the earth. But the context in which he is delivering it is really a radical call to a conversion. A change of heart. A change of basic practices in our everyday life. And I want to share with you um, a little poem, which I love, and then explore the scriptures with you a little bit. This poem is, makes me think of Pope Francis. It's written by Meister Eckhart, um, a, a mystic and a, a monk himself, a great theologian back in the 12th century. It's wonderful, but delightful story. All day long a little burrow labors, sometimes with heavy loads on her back, and sometimes just with worries about things that bother only burrows. And worries, as 
we know, can be more exhausting than physical labor. Once in a while, a kind monk comes to her stable and brings a pear. But more than that, he looks into the burrow's eyes and touches her ears. And for, for a few seconds, the burrow is free and even seems to laugh. Because love does that. Love frees. For me, one of the memorable lines among many from the Pope's visit to Congress, when speaking of the refugee crisis, he says, don't see the numbers, see their faces. To truly look into a person's eyes, touch their ear, see them, and know that, let them know that you, you have seen them. To let someone look into your eyes and let them see you and really share who you are. That exchange, that dialogue, that mutual respect, that caring for one another as we want to be cared, cared for, that is a change of heart. That is a conversion. That is a way we can begin in our home to transform our common home. This scripture reading, very familiar scripture reading, ask and you will receive, seek and find, knock and the door will be open to you. Just a couple of years ago, I, one of those moments where a familiar becomes a little different. I saw it in a new way. And I see it in a way in which Pope Francis is inviting us through our daily practice to come closer and closer to whatever word you want to use for God, the holy, the sacred, Allah, Abba. How do we deepen that relationship? And normally, at least for me, to ask and keep asking, you will receive. It was always about, for me, the receiving part of that. That's where I put the emphasis. Ask and you're going to get something. You're going to get an answer. But what happened to me a couple years ago, it was this ask, and the way it's translated in the inclusive Bible is perfect for how I'm thinking about this now. Ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. Knock and keep knocking. What's that going to do for your relationship with God? You're always in this place of openness. You're always in this place of asking and seeking and expecting something to come. And something will. All of a sudden, you've got this notion that something's going to come to me. Well, something does always come to us. Something always does come to us. We know it's not often what we ask for. But that something that comes to us as a, as a gift, and there's, there's the essence of it for me, it comes to us as a gift. What's the opposite of asking and seeking and knocking? What do you think? Giving. Giving. Get, well, okay. Okay, I'm going more this way. Ignoring. Telling. Instead of having that, that notion of like, I need. Mm -hmm. Ignoring. Grabbing. I've got it all together, thank you very much. I don't need anything else. I'm in control. I don't need to go anywhere. I'm going to wait for them to knock and come to my house. See, this is the humility of, of the Pope. And this is the attitude that the Pope wants to us engender towards Mother Earth. It's a gift. And it's giving all the time. The reason for the Rilke quote is that nature is speaking to us year-round. We don't have to open the scriptures, we can walk in the scriptures. We're right at the beginning of this amazing season of autumn, where now it's green and we know pretty soon it's going to be, the trees are going to be bare, but in the meantime it'll be gold and, and red. They're speaking to us, and what are they saying to us about this abundance that's been given to us through the gift of summer?
through the gift of gardeners, the gift of seeds and, and water and, and sun. A gift. So this notion of, of asking and keep asking and seek and keep seeking and knocking, keep knocking, it's a way of living in a place of hopeful expectation with all that God wants to give us. Wants to give us. We have to be, I think, in a place of openness to be able to receive something that's not of our own making. Not within our control, but in our ability to be in relationship with one another, to have the dialogue with one another, with our inner self, and even with the creator of everything. This is what the Pope Francis is calling us to, one of the things. And I want to share with you a couple of uh, sections from his uh, encyclical, which I referred to this summer when it first, you first shared that. Now it's in its wonderful book form, and Kathy has some copies of it for sale if anyone would like to pick up a copy. It's a beautiful, beautiful little book, and we may even figure out how, a way to have a study of it here at the church here pretty soon. But here are some passages from this encyclical, which for me go along with this notion of creation as gift, of being in this relationship with the holy, which is asking, seeking, knocking. This is near the end of the encyclical, and he's talking about an ecological education. We are speaking of an attitude of the heart, one which approaches life with serene attentiveness. We walk in the scriptures, which is capable of being fully present to someone without thinking of what comes next. which accepts each moment as a gift from God to be lived to, to the full. Jesus taught us this attitude when he invited us to contemplate the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. Do you know that line from Emily Dickinson? The only commandment of Jesus she ever obeyed was that one. <laughs> Consider the lilies and the birds of the air, and it will take you a long way. Jesus also taught us to see the rich young man knowing the young man's restlessness. And Jesus looked at him with love, like the monk looking at the burrow. Jesus was completely present to everyone and to everything, and in this way he showed us the way to overcome unhealthy anxiety, which makes us, now watch out, he's very kind, this Pope, but he can get you. <laughs> Overcome and healthy anxiety, which makes us superficial, aggressive, and compulsive consumers. <laughs> you look kind. <laughs> Jesus was completely present to everyone and everything. And in this way, he showed us the way to overcome unhealthy anxiety. The burrow carries anxiety, which makes us superficial, aggressive, and compulsive consumers. One expression of this new attitude of the heart Pope Francis suggests is when we stop and give thanks to God before and after meals. The wonderful phrase, saying grace. He asks all believers to return to this beautiful and meaningful custom. The moment of blessing, however brief, reminds us of our dependence on God for life. It strengthens our feeling of gratitude for the gifts of creation, it acknowledges those who by their labors provide us with these goods, and it reaffirms our solidarity with those in greatest need. 
dependence, gratitude for gift and for labor, and also connecting with those who haven't got what we've been given in the simple act of saying grace. And then finally, for all these things that Pope Francis is calling to, which is going to call for a change of heart and practice, daily choices for us as individuals, communities, nations, and it might seem overwhelming, he says, all is not lost. Human beings, while capable of the worst, are also capable of rising above themselves, choosing again what is good, and making a new start despite their mental and social conditioning. We are able to take an honest look at ourselves to acknowledge our deep dissatisfaction and, and embark on new paths to authentic freedom. No system can completely suppress our openness to what is good and true and beautiful, or our God-given ability to respond to this grace at work deep in our hearts. I appeal to everyone throughout the world not to forgive this dignity, which is ours. No and take that away from us. Ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. Not. What are we asking for? What are we asking for in our own lives? And this afternoon, after this worship time, hopefully not afternoon, <laughs> in our conversation around the budget, what are we asking for from one another? Fundamentally, I think, first of all, before they ask, is the act of gratitude for what we have received. And then fundamentally, what we're asking for is together as a community, how can we share that with one another and people who we believe are asking and seeking and knocking for these things that we experience here together? Let the people say. Amen. Amen.